today we'll do a demonstration on how to perform multiple regression using JASP or JSP uh, and these are the variables that are involved we have academic self-efficacy as our predict uh, as our outcome variable uh, and it's being predicted by three variables uh, peer social persuasion parent social persuasion and teacher social persuasion uh, but before that we let's look at our model so this is our model so the model is suggesting that self-efficacy is uh, being predicted by social persuasion coming from three different groups now if you're familiar with the literature on academic self-efficacy or self-efficacy in general uh, it is said that there are three sources of self-efficacy and one of which is social persuasion uh, and that social persuasion could lead to an improvement uh, in the belief of a certain individual that he can accomplish or perform something successfully so but what is not clear however is what happens when uh, social persuasion is identified particularly coming from peers parents and teachers uh, would it be possible that certain specific groups such as parents and teachers um, would have a, have, have a better impact on academic self-efficacy compared to social persuasion from peers so this is something which we'd like to, th to test using multiple regression so um, let's just let's do that so first I have uh, converted I have assigned these variables as continuous variables by choosing this icon uh, and to perform multiple regression click on regression and then linear regression now I, I performed this analysis a while ago so the variables are already entered but let's do it that again okay. so our dependent variable is academic self-efficacy let's place it here and our covariates or our predictor variables are the three uh, types of social persuasion uh, and this is our result so there are three tables each one of them are providing us with um, substantial uh, information or different information now I've uh, copied this and pasted it on this word document which now looks like this okay. so the first thing that we have to look at is our model summary so when we say our model summary we are looking at um, how much we're looking at the collective impact of these three uh, predictor variables on our outcome variable so there are a couple of values here the first one is our capital R now this one is our multiple correlation so our multiple correlation coefficient refers to the cor the, the relationship or the cor uh, the correlation coefficient um, of the three variables as a whole collectively and our uh, dependent variable or outcome variable now the next one is r squared or variance uh, uh, however this value is value specific to our sample uh, and because what happens in the sample is a sort of an estimation of what happens in the population uh, the, the next value is a sort of an adjusted value uh, so as to provide us with a better estimate of what happens in the population so in here we have a uh, 0.163 uh, which I would assume is a better estimation uh, compared to the original value of the R squared now R squared is also known as variance it's also called sometimes as variance explained uh, and basically this value tells us about um, the, the amount of variance in uh, the dependent variable which is academic self-efficacy that could be explained by the variance that is uh, happening uh, among the three predictor variables and to better appreciate this uh, we can convert this into percentage 
So 0.163 in percentage is 16.3%. So that means that 16.3% of the variance in academic self-efficacy is accounted for or, exp or could be explained by the variance that is happening uh, in our three predictor variables. Now 16.3 is not um, a, a particularly large uh, amount of the variance explained but the next thing that we have to ask is at the very least is this is this a significant uh, is, is this significant uh, and to answer that we have our next table uh, we have an ANOVA table here that take that tests the significance of this model so we look at our p-value which is less than 0 0.001 uh, and that suggests that uh, there is um, uh, that the result is significant so we need to say that the model as a whole so these three predictors as a whole or collectively predicting academic self-efficacy is uh, is the, the their capacity to predict the uh, academic self-efficacy is significant now on top of that so we now know that the model as a whole is significantly predicting um, academic self-efficacy uh, and it's predicting as much as 16.3 percent of the variance in academic self-efficacy the next question would be among the three predictor variables which of them actually contribute significantly so among peer social persuasion parent social persuasion and teacher social persuasion which among these three um, significantly predicts uh, academic self-efficacy upon controlling for the two other variables now uh, intercept here um, you, you might as well ignore that and this is basically uh, our y-intercept um, this has no um, it's not typically used in, in interpreting our data now we have here a couple of values so this one is your unstandardized regression coefficient I'll try to explain to you later on what what this means so this is the now we have to take note that this unstandardized regression coefficients are in the same unit as uh, as with the scales that we use uh, and this unstandardized regression coefficient is transformed into a standardized scale and so we have here the standardized regression coefficient now to test whether or not these three variables significantly predict um, um, academic self-efficacy we have to see if the standardized regression coefficients are significantly different from zero because if it's zero therefore it's not predicting academic self-efficacy uh, but if it is significantly different from zero then uh, it suggests that uh, it, it is a predictor of self academic self-efficacy so we perform a series of t-tests here um, and these are their t values and look at our p-values here so this is uh, greater than 0 0.05 which means that after controlling for parent social persuasion or teacher social persuasion or another way of saying it is that assuming that parent social persuasion and teacher social persuasion are it are at a constant peer social persuasion does not significantly predict academic self-efficacy now what about this one parent social persuasion after controlling for peer social persuasion and teacher social persuasion assuming that these two other variables are at a constant parent social persuasion predict academic self-efficacy the p-value is significant and it's predicting academic self-efficacy positively we need to say the higher the uh, parent social persuasion the, that would lead to a higher academic self-efficacy and lastly teacher social persuasion 
after controlling for peer social persuasion and parent social persuasion, we can see that teacher social persuasion is also a significant uh, predictor. And looking at our standardized uh, uh, standardized regression coefficients, it seems that teacher social persuasion is contributing the most out of the three, followed by parent social persuasion, and lastly, and not significantly, peer social persuasion. Okay. Um, so what does that mean? So it means that um, when you talk about academic self-efficacy, uh, the, the social persuasion that we receive from our parents, uh, particularly from our teachers, seem to have more impact on our belief about our abilities on certain domains compared to the kind of social persuasion that we receive from our friends, or our classmates, our peers. Now let me talk a little bit more about this unstandardized regression coefficients. So the way to um, sort of interpret this, although you don't usually put this in um, in a report, particularly if you are in a social science discipline, but what this means is that it's an estimation of how much increase do we expect in academic self-efficacy given a one unit increase in our predictor variables. So this means, particularly, for every one unit increase in parent social persuasion, there will be a 0.116 increase in academic self-efficacy. Now, of course, you have to consider your scales uh, when you interpret that. And in this case, for every one unit increase in teacher social persuasion, there is a 0.43 increase in academic self-efficacy. And that would go, but and that would be the same as saying that one unit decrease in teacher social persuasion would also lead to a 0.43 decrease in self-efficacy. Now, of course, you have to understand that this is merely an estimation uh, there are um, residual factors so while we can while, while we can sort of make that kind of prediction understand that our prediction is not a perfect prediction so that's it uh, i hope you learned something and um, watch out for my next videos